Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we are back for another episode of Ask GN. It's been a while, probably a month or two, because we have been slammed with one content piece after another, as you have all seen. But I wanted to come back and visit Ask GN and the new questions that have been posed on all of the DirectX 12 and Vulkan content especially. So, starting us off, we have a question from Storebrand, great name by the way, who says, if NVIDIA cards need an SLI bridge to connect in... I guess normal SLI, how does the 970 connect to the 390X without the bridge? So this was specifically on the SLI Fire video we did where we talk about running multiple cards from different brands under something called explicit multi-GPU in DirectX 12. So this test in particular was run with the Ashes of Singularity. The 390X and the 970 that we ran were not connected by a bridge of any kind. They were just in the PCIe slots and that is done there is something called MDA or multi-display adapter. The normal setup for SLI is LDA, link display adapter, and the test we did for DirectX 12 does not require a bridge. They communicate strictly through the PCIe interface. They talk through the PCIe bus instead of that one gigabyte per second bridge that normally sits on the top of the card. So DirectX 12 is able to use MDA so that multi-brand cards can be configured in the same system and talk to one another without a proprietary bridge. And it also does mean that you would be able to ditch bridges in the future for SLI, potentially, depending on how NVIDIA and the game developers work with this technology. Now, for DirectX 11, you're still using bridges for SLI, and for AMD, the Crossfire bridge is actually not required anymore for most modern setups. So next question, then, is from Anon Imus. So Anonymous says, so when are we going to see actual gains in games with regard to Vulkan and DirectX 12? And then he says again, when? So Anonymous, the answer to that question from the Vulkan versus DirectX 11 video is pretty simple, really. It just depends on when game developers start integrating this technology into their games properly. And I keep mentioning this in these videos, but... We talked about this with Chris Roberts in a Vulcan and DirectX 12 interview a while ago, and it's actually got some really good content about this exact point. And the answer is that developers need to actually build their games from the ground up to see real games for these APIs, as opposed to just sort of changing the calls to the API, the API calls and the code. Because you can definitely call DirectX 12 or Vulcan and just sort of plant the API in there pull it up as necessary on devices that are compatible with it, but it doesn't mean that the advantages will be seen to the end user. So to see those advantages, the developers need to build ground up. They have to do special things for optimization, for uh, even things like explicit multi-GPU that needs to be handled explicitly through the developer. They need to sit there and make sure it's functional, not just sort of included as a package. And the same goes for any other optimizations or feature sets within these various APIs. So the the short answer is it depends. I would probably say at least a year before we start seeing real serious gains from DX12 and Vulkan and serious implementation attempts. But right now, so many people are still on Windows 7 and Windows 8 that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go exclusive to DX12. And those who have gone or claim to have gone exclusive to DX12 for generally exclusivity with the Windows Store, I would probably argue that it's actually not as optimized as it could be because most of these games, you have to remember, they're in development for years at a time often, and DX12 hasn't really been ready for quite that long, so they may just be more of the, uh, the changing calls types of game support for the, the new APIs. Uh, so definitely a year, probably more than that for actual serious gains, and at that point the fidelity will be amped up enough that we start forgetting about the gains that were given because the game graphics will improve hopefully in step with the amount of overhead that the API has removed from the CPU and so forth. Next question is from Guglielmo Bagella, who said, I'm wondering, maybe I lost it when you said it, but is there any difference in the CPU usage at all between DX11 and DX12 here in Ashes of Singularity or AOS? Uh, so that was in the SLI Fire video also. And the answer is yes. Actually, one of the biggest things for these new APIs, DirectX 12 and Vulkan explicitly, is that they remove a lot of overhead from the CPU, and they do that by handling draw calls differently. So draw calls will get fed into the GPU instead, which is a parallel processor. It's got more cores available to run these geometric draw calls. Like draw calls basically when 
the CPU tells the GPU, hey, it's time to draw this piece of geometry on the screen, and the GPU does it. But if we remove the CPU from that process, it actually speeds things up a lot, or you at least reduce the CPU's workload in that process. Because the CPU is a sequential processor, it can only do one of these at a time, even though it can do many, many transactions per second. It could be billions of cycles per second, depending on what you're working with. Uh, so DirectX 11 and 12, yes, there's a big difference between the CPU performance in DX11 and 12 under ideal situations. Uh, going back to the previous question I just answered, if the game is not really fully built ground up for DX12, then no, you might actually see some performance loss depending on the level of driver support, the video card you're using, is it asynchronous, sort of tuned, and the game's optimization with that particular API. So that's the, that's the story right now for DX11 versus 12 with CPU support. And then we've also got one uh, sort of off question here that's not related to the new APIs, and that was from Amos, who said, would a cheap PSU tester do the same job as the multi the multimeter that we used in the motherboard on fire video? So we, when we lit our motherboard on fire accidentally and used the multimeter to check the power supply voltage on each of the rails and each of the pins, that was to show that, yes, 12 volts is coming through, 5 volts is coming through, 3.3 volts is coming through, whatever. Uh, yes, if you get a PSU tester, even if it's a $20 one, it will basically do the same job. Uh, most of them, the good ones, have LCDs on them. They have displays to show you what the voltage is, or in the very least, they just light up and say good or bad. And that would make your life a bit easier if you're doing this regularly. If you already own a multimeter, it's cheaper to use the multimeter and test it. But if you don't, then it's, it's probably cheaper to buy just a cheapo $20 PSU tester and test the voltage that way. Multimeters, of course, are a lot more versatile, though, so I would recommend getting one if you're doing this type of stuff regularly. The last question here is from Locura, who says, what should I get, GTX 970 or R9 390, or R9 390, excuse me, not the X? And that's from the previous Ask GN video. This depends. So the GTX 970 we've seen outperform the 390X in a lot of games lately, and that just sort of depends on which games they are and who the developers are. And that's because of the GameWorks optimizations and all these other things that are in there where NVIDIA may be more optimized on either their drivers or on the game software side to better support the NVIDIA GPUs. And that benefits the GTX 970 in the matchup between the 970 and the 390 or 390X. That said, they trade blows a lot, especially as you increase the resolution. And we see AMD generally does start to swing favorably against NVIDIA when the resolution is pushed to 1440p or similarly high resolutions. So that is one instance where AMD does have a bit of an advantage, depends on what kind of monitor and resolution setup you're planning to go with. But the thing with the resolution increase is if you're working with an ultra wide or something like that, you basically just take the, the width times the height that gives you your total pixel count. So once you expand past 1920 by 1080, whatever that is, a couple million, the, uh, actually more than that, uh, once you expand past that point, AMD does start getting a bit of an advantage with their game processing, and that's because the way the pixel pipe works, AMD does better raw throughput of pixel processing for higher resolutions, whereas Nvidia will often handle things like filtration tasks and all these post FX and things like that a bit better than AMD. So just the, the sort of truncated answer is it depends. Both are good GPUs, both are pretty affordable right now, but I would say look at what you're playing. Does the game you, you wanna play maybe invest hundreds or thousands of hours into, does it tend to favor the 970 or the 390? And you can find that in a lot of our benchmarks or other people's benchmarks. And then look at things like extras. So with the Nvidia cards, you get shadow play and things like that. AMD has its own video capture software. Uh, I personally will say that we do use shadow play for our game capture because it's a bit easier to work with and it's pretty reliable. AMD's GVR, basically DVR, but GVR for games was good. Uh, I am not sure how it works these days because it's been sort of metamorphized into plays.tv and all this other stuff with Raptor. But that is one thing to look at. Power consumption, watt draw, of course, is an argument as well. And then if you really care about overclocking, maybe you're an enthusiast, you would want whatever card, high-end card, in either the 970 or 390 class or 390X class that will give you the most overhead for play with overclocking if that's important to you. But 
Otherwise, look at the price and then look at the benchmarks for the particular games that you want to play. That should basically answer it. There is no real wrong choice here for the most part. So that is all for this video other than one last throw in question here that we had posted just before filming this. And it is from the Hilo 623 who says, quote, are you ever going to cut your hair? No. So thank you for watching Ask GN. Check the link in the description below to hit the website up if you want to read all of our in-depth coverage. And as always, Patreon link the post-roll video to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.